Hey guys, Mike here. So, oh boy, what a day in the market. Somebody said I didn't put enough oomph into it yesterday, and I said, it didn't deserve it yesterday. It was okay. But today, especially for, oh, especially one stock, Tesla, oh my goodness, right? And so we're going to get into Tesla in detail. A lot of people are saying, you know, what's this? It's a big move, and a lot of people got, you know, pieces of the puzzle together, but not all the pieces. So I'm going to put all the pieces together for you and show you why this thing moved like it did, where it's actually going, what we're running into now, where it could come back down to, all this stuff for you. And, you know, we'll go into another reason why you see the Qs very close to setting a new all-time high. And I'll show you why on that one with some price stuff, targets. And then what I'm also looking for on the Qs going forward for like the next probably 75 to 90 days. Okay, so just FYI on that. Now, obviously we did because I like to cover this stuff for you. And uh, real quick, we did have Joel's job openings come open. And guess what? It was higher than expected. The market's like, who gives a crap? Uh, yields fell off the cliff and stocks rose and stuff like that. But you can see, I just make this clear. Here's back, you know, before the financial crisis. Here was normal times, like 2014 and 2019. We hadn't even reached that level yet. So we still got to come down some more, right, to get that normalization going on. Now, why did the market rally like it did? And the Q's end up over 1% because of these stocks right here. These are the top seven holdings of hedge funds. During bull markets, it is okay to follow hedge funds, just FYI, because they got the money to plow in and move these stocks up, right? We've talked about it in detail. Now, of course, what got Tesla pumping this morning was they did beat the deliveries, right? They're expecting 439K. They come in at 444K, 5% year-over-year decline, 15% quarter-over-quarter. But that's not really the, the big thing here, right? That, that's a good thing. That's icing on the cake for them. And you can see the deliveries right here, right? So obviously the higher rates have definitely had an effect on Tesla, the slowing of China and all that good stuff. But, you know, maybe we just saw it coming because obviously Ch Chinese EV companies, you know, their deliveries are better as well. And so we'll see going forward. And they've been doing a big push with the lower price and stuff. But, you know, getting away from that. Looking at the chart here real quick and then go into what's really just driving this uh, kind of move here because this looks like the old Tesla, right? Where you see these three or four day moves where you're like, oh my gosh, rip your face off, right? But when you pull the volume profile, no matter where you pull it up to, right there you can see why this thing's been cutting and moving so fast, right? Because you see this drop off, these voids, and that's usually where you cut through it like a hot knife through butter, okay? And it got all the way into that trend line right there and just above it as well. That trend line's been holding it down for almost three years. Now we'll start running into some resistance. Again, no matter what time frame you pull this into, this is what you're usually seeing right here. And so looking at this, you know, could it continue to go higher? Absolutely. Especially like 65 is really where you see the biggest, you know, problem when you when you look at moving forward. But again, it's above a 200-day moving average. 50's curling up, right? It's been quite a while. <laughs> so we've seen that right there, that combination. So that is a good thing for Tesla. Again, we'll look at that trend line right here. And when we pull out, you know, you can see as far as like support right there off this move, right there, and we talked about it yesterday, that that will be really, really good support. And you can see it just hugged that trend line when it got above it all day, and they pushed it up in the last 15 minutes. But again, what's the combination? Millions and millions of call sweeps coming in for the 230, 235 day, right? They were even pumping the 250s, as you can see right here. So now all of a sudden you got the old the tesla flow going right we're all by everybody's running into this for the premiums and trying to push this up and they're selling uh puts and everything else right and so when you look what's the other thing it's not a coincidence this is happening when nvidia is showing weakness okay nvidia ran up tesla did nothing nvidia topped out at 140 for now started coming down what happened tesla all of a sudden starts to move and then nvidia starts to do exactly what tesla's doing it gets stuck in a range right 118 224 ish right there and what's tesla been doing boom rocket shipping right because june was supposed to be the most bullish month and all of a sudden you know here comes july and and here comes nvidia and all, what happened they did that split and all of a sudden all those premiums people were getting for nvidia are way down now right because they did the split the stock's much cheaper the options are much cheaper you're not getting as much to sell the puts and sell the calls and all that stuff here comes tesla into a bullish month all of a sudden this ai pump is happening and everything so people flew right into it okay that's what's happening and again when you're looking at connects to move up yeah i'd say look anywhere if it does move up 235 237.50 right there as you can see with that volume node right there would be a pretty good 
uh, decent resistance for you to pull back. Cause you got, you got to consolidate this guys. Tesla just doesn't move straight up. No stock does. And so it does come down right there between like the 210 to 15 area, which is where the 200 will also be. It'll be a good support for it if it does, but understand why it's so hard to predict stocks when they get in this crazy parabolic type moves. And it's because of who, because of people like this right here. Sticking with his short call on the stock after calling for it to head to $50 here on our show last November. So how do you feel about it now? For someone who cares so much about the human race, he is firing a lot of humans at this moment. And a lot, everything's kind of falling apart in their core business. So what's he doing? He's pointing everybody to robo-taxis and AI and autonomy and all that. At the same time, the DOJ is now, Reuters is reporting, is, you know, is investigating this for wire fraud, et cetera, because he's been selling a product that doesn't exist. So we have August 8th is this unveiling of Robo Taxi Day. And before that, it's going to be the vote. Shareholders are probably going to grant him $56 billion in options, obviously, here. A big news event that I don't think got enough play was an investment into a company called Wave, which has been around now for seven years, by SoftBank, by NVIDIA, and a follow-on by Microsoft, Bill Gates personally, et cetera. A billion dollars just got injected. This company is now in the process. They are using autonomy right now for driving in cities. And so I don't think people paid attention to that enough. I'm invested in a venture capital fund compound that actually has an investment. They were there early seven years ago. So just for full disclosure. So I've been up on the story for a long time. I think people really need to see. And I think the more time that goes by here and their core business is coming under pressure, I think this move to own it for robo taxes and AI is going to you know, fade over time. So 150 billion market cap at 50 bucks seems like a reasonable valuation. to me. You're still short and you're, you're still looking short. forward to head to yeah, 50. Yeah, staying short. And so you don't know what the shorts are doing, right? Because right now they're getting toasted. Right, but you you have some mega shorts, right? People are mega short in the stock. They're just staying in there, right? And then some are folding. Some are okay, we nope, this thing's gonna continue to go. We'll get out. A lot of them I would assume have really closed at this point in time. That's why you're also seeing that big move, uh, because they have been been cooked at this point in time. With that one though, to me, I don't know, tell me what you think. To me, it seems more personal than anything else. Like I gotta be right, and the guy has money, you know what I'm saying? He's not going broke short in Tesla, okay? And so when I look at it though, it seems like he just really one doesn't like Elon Musk, but two wants to really be right. Right, the Tesla's going to go to fifty bucks. I mean, and you know, let me know what you think about that in the comments. But that's just kind of what I sense uh, during that interview and stuff. Now, when you look at what's going on and why the queues are just absolutely going crazy right now, if it continue, is because you have so many of these mega caps in price discovery. You know, new all time high today, new all time high the, uh, yesterday. And so this one right here, when you have no resistance on these mega caps and they can just continue to move up if Wall Street keeps pushing them like this, you know, that's why you, you can see, that's why July, of course, I showed you the other day, it is usually very bullish, 100% on XLQ, 90% on the Qs, usually green. But that's a tough thing to short when you got all these guys up here in price discovery, which means no resistance above them. And right there will be, you know, decent support if it does move down there's another line right there around 433 good support obviously this one hadn't moved up crazy like tesla so that or nvidia and those moving averages are right there too so it's not too overstretched apple new all-time high today again this could move up in price discovery no resistance these are the most popular owned right and so you know when you look at this <laughs> with this moving up with no resistance above these like this they continue to do it yeah the cues are going to fly you know and when you look Obviously, we, you hope to get some kind of pullback at some time. But again, if they continue to move up, 221, 222 right there, to hit that trend line right there. If we go back, you know, I love my trend lines, draw another trend line, you know, and then we look at both of them. You know, you can plainly see that you're anywhere from around 221 to 224, somewhere in there. But that also provides what? Resistance, right? And so looking at that, you know, if they can, if it can break through those, then of course we pull some fibs here and just kind of take a guess of what we're looking at. You know, one at 1.5 right there, 228, 1.618, uh, right around 233, somewhere in there. And so again, another one just setting in price discovery. So we'll see if this one continues to get pushed up by Wall Street. And when we zoom in a little bit more, if we do see a pullback, again, I always like to mark out these fair value guys right here and look for this one right here for it to come down and grab liquidity between 217 and 218 before it to get a bounce right there again because these moves i mean they're going parabolic but we have a short week you know there's going to be pullbacks and all that guys all that stuff folks so just keep that in mind uh google didn't set all time high got very close again it keeps bouncing up against this trend line right here if i drew another line you say it's a rising wedge which normally uh, comes to the downside which is absolutely true 
But if it moves up again in the morning, hits that trend line, then it is in price discovery as well. It will be setting another all-time high. And good support, if it does break down, is going to be the trend line right there, where which was resistance, right? Which would bring it all the way down to like 173, 175, depending on when that would happen. But when you look, the thing about Google is, is you have seasonality on your side, right? Is the best month for Google has been July. 90% of the time is green. The average return is like 8.5%. So keep that in mind on Google. And you look at another one in price discovery, Amazon, new all-time high today, broke 200. There it is. You can see like three days ago, it had another, uh, I guess this is the previous all-time high now. And so this is another one that's moving up. Now you got what? You got Amazon Prime Day coming up right and so that's a bullish thing for this to be going into and that's not to the 15th or 16th if it does pull back watch right here it'll be great support between like 190 193 there if you do get weakness on this one uh again another one with no resistance up above you start pulling some fibs you know 202 205 i've heard as high as 220 on this one so just keep that in mind if the option, if the option market especially starts getting behind this one and continues to push because 200 ain't nothing but a psychological level once you break it especially get a retest on and bounce yeah i mean this one can go as well now the cues did not set an all-time high today almost came very close to the end when they were pushing it up in like the last 15 minutes right there but it basically just set dead even with it and so Tomorrow, we'll see if they continue to push us up. If it does continue to get pushed up, what I am looking for over like the next literally like 60 to 80 days, whatever it is, mostly July and August, is to see if that's a left shoulder, we come up to sit ahead, and then we start to come back down and we set a right shoulder over here, right? And so that's what I'm looking for. Again, it'll have to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty. That's for sure. I'm just letting you know what I'm looking at to see how this goes. And the reason why I'm looking at that, because when you go back, and you look at the last couple of times we have actually sold off. That's basically what happens. It's not textbook, but you can make out some shoulders here, right? You get that extra a new high right there and then you get a lower high and then boom, sell off ends up taking once we break that midline right there. We go down. If you look at the, last, the time before that, right? Again, not pretty. This one comes up. We get a newer high right here. It's kind of a head. And all of a sudden we get another shoulder over here and then boom, there's your neckline. It breaks down below it, fakes us out, comes back up pulls liquidity from that daily fair value gap and then crashes back down, right? And so again, that's, it's not gonna be pretty, it's not gonna be textbook, but that's what I'm gonna be looking for over the next couple of months to see if that is what's happening, okay? So if we go for a new high and come back down and break down below that previous high as well, that's why I'm looking for this, okay? I'm just letting you know. Now, when it comes to QQEW, here's another one. If the Qs are gonna continue to go up, Hopefully you get more than just the MAG7 pushing up as well, right? The QQEW, which is the equal weighted ETF, and the QQQ has already come down, tested support right there, came back up, tested again. Now it's just consolidating, right? And there's, pre there's all-time highs right there, right above it. And so let's see if we get more breath pushed into this market. And I bet you'll be surprised, or are you surprised, that it was discretionary that was the leading sector. Actually beat out the MAG-8, beat out semiconductors, beat out financials, which had a great day, by the way. And the reason why I always tell people you have to look in the ETF you are buying is because of what it actually carries. And by the way, it was a pretty green day all the way around, honestly, So you got the energy. It's because it's right here. Amazon and Tesla make up 39% of XLY ETF, as you can see right there. And of course, Tesla was up. 10%. Amazon had a really good day because I can promise you Home Depot, McDonald's, Booking Holdings, all the rest of them were either flat or red. Okay. But kind of surprising when I saw it. But then when you look at what it holds, not really. Now, data tomorrow, remember, it's a half day, but you're going to have before the market closes ADP employment change, unemployment claims, ISM services, PMI, crude oil inventories, then will be closed. And then the FOMC minutes come out after the market's closed. And so we won't see the effect of the FOMC minutes. Normally you do get some volatility, but remember half day tomorrow closed for 4th of July on Thursday. Happy 4th of July to everybody, just in case I forget to say it. I don't know if I'll do a video tomorrow or not. I'm knowing I'm not doing one on 4th of July because uh, I'll be intoxicated and, you know, laying by the pool, playing with the kids and uh, having fun and shooting firework and stuff. So that ain't going to happen. Maybe I'll do one on Friday to catch everything up and, and make up for it and stuff. So, and feel free to put your questions down in the comments. I'll start putting that together for Saturday's video uh, to answer all your questions and stuff like that. But, you know, that's where we're at again. Hard for market to go down when your big dogs or, you know, your Clydesdales are setting all this price discovery and all of a sudden resistance has almost disappeared in a lot of those, right? I mean, 
it, it's rough. Some of them, like Tesla, you would think it has to digest this move at some point in time for sure, right? But as long as shorts and uh, the uh, call sweeps are continue to roll in, continue to look for it to move up to you know that level I told you about. Uh, if not, look for support. Uh, we're also told you. So that's where we're at. It was a crazy day today. Maybe we'll see if we have a crazy half day tomorrow. I think somebody asked, tried to find this. Let me know if you can find it. It was like the day before 4th of July, I believe, is like green. It, it's a very high percentage, a very high percentage. Uh, but I couldn't find anything to really back it up. I found a couple things here and there. But somebody was uh, pointing out some crazy stats to me, but they couldn't show me the source so but i want to know if you can find it for me so anyway hope you guys got some out of it please hit the like subscribe button on your way out and i'll see you tomorrow